And so the chair, there's like it's circle saw. So mm -hmm. that was a I was able to uh, actually come within a ten year window of that date. When do you think that one's that one? Oh, it was actually uh, 1880 to 1890. Here's the exact. The only thing different is that upper rail right there. It says a chair, American spindles and back only, East Lake style attributes on the otherwise vernacular style chair, 1880-1890. Um, factory chair, uh, it's maple with ash rungs or rails. Um, the legs are turned. Um, you can see that the, uh, the amount the detail or the precision that the turnings at least on these two legs was probably done by hand rather than a duplicator so the guy at the time there were uh, treadle powered lathes were mm. probably the most predominant uh, meaning that the flywheel kept the centrifugal motion of the wood in place so that it utilized as a battery it kind of stored the the energy of the craftsman as he was pushing the treadle plate, much like a singer sewing machine. You just get that flywheel going and then that keeps the wood going. Um, they have they did kind of rob from the arts and crafts movement. I was getting some feel from that, so it's probably ripping, ripping off Stickley, Gustav Stickley a little bit um, and throwing but it's definitely a factory chair. There was some, uh, you can see the bandsaw marks. See, here's the circle saw marks that I was telling you about. See, that was cut on a circle saw mill and the lumber roughed out and then it was taken into a, uh, probably a, either a water powered or steam powered belt driven workshop. So, meaning that all the, all the belts would be channeling through the roof and then it would transfer the energy from the main shaft down to the particular tool and they would activate that belt and that would start powering the tool hmm. um this is four pieces the, the round part of the seat is four pieces probably dialed together and glued um and then it was uh of course they drilled the holes and hand caned this this is all done by hand so it was the original caning um and then once they probably hide glue was the method in which they glued these together because I, in the production of chairs, they very rarely ever didn't, uh, they didn't build green wood like uh, your Appalachian style chairs. They were worried about fast and quick methods of assembly. So it was definitely uh, So you're saying that the Appalachian chair would have been green wood and allowed to swell into the joint is that right this would have been dry and this this piece would have been made out of green wood so that when those two went together the equalization of the moisture in that joint actually caused the joint to be stronger and last longer because there was a swelling and a shrinking taking place um, this would have been probably all dry wood mm -hmm and they would re be relying on the glue to hold it, which is amazing that it's as sturdy as it is, given its, given its age.